up guys, Thaddeus here. Welcome to the channel if you are new. Um, in today's video, we're literally just gonna talk about drop shipping in 2018, kind of like the state of the market and what's different, kind of just like what you should expect, right? Jumping into drop shipping in the year 2018. If you're watching this in 2019, well, you're too late. Oh, come on! Okay, so number one, guys, um, this this really, really relates to kind of how I market my my products when I'm drop shipping, which is with Instagram influencers, okay? And Kind of how, how it's how it's changed, I guess, over time is like so. Basically, I, I just started drop shipping two two and a half years ago, okay. And back then, it was a lot easier to just one, you know, hey, buy a shadow from an influencer. They throw it up, everyone kind of sees it on their feed, and you can drive traffic and get a purchase, right? Um, and th th there's a lot of changes that have occurred from those two years, guys. Like one, Instagram's API has changed. You know, like the algorithm. Everyone knows, you know, the Facebook's algorithm for like you know scrolling down the news feed. It's not chronological, neither is Instagram's. They use kind of their own API to kind of determine what pages you they might think you'd be more interested in, okay? Most of the time, that's more personal pages, like people you actually follow that you know in person. And a lot of times, uh, they try and push away, you know, these accounts that sell shoutouts because they want, you know, us dropshippers paying for ads on Instagram or Facebook because that, that's how they make their like their money, right? So that's kind of a thing that, that has occurred between these two, two and a half years. And because of that, guys, with Instagram influencers in general, it's just um, like how you market. You need to change. Like you, like you always got to be like willing to adapt to these market changes. And one of the things that that I personally had to do right over these two years is when I very very first started dropshipping, guys. You'll even notice in like my first videos, um, I sometimes touch on like Instagram influencers and like the size of these pages that I want to work with. Before, right, I would always say, guys, you know, look for pages like above 400,000 followers, you know, um, less than a million, depending on your budget, stuff like that, like 400K to a million followers, right? That was kind of like the prime range that I personally looked at, okay? That was two years ago. Now, because of this change in the market, right, dropshipping is a lot more, you know, popular, I guess you could say. Like, there's more people trying to, like, um, get their feet wet in that in that sort of industry and so because of that there's sort of like a market equilibrium going on where there's a lot of people that are buying accounts on Instagram inflating them with followers inflating them with fake engagement and then trying to capitalize on all these new drop shippers trying to rush into the industry you know buy a bunch of shout outs get a bunch of money and get rich quick right um, so that, that there's a whole there's a whole market of just people selling you fake shout outs Okay, and that's something that I've also tried to warn you guys as well in like some other videos and stuff like that. It's like there, there's there's people that just want your money and they'll offer you, you know, cheaper rates for Instagram shout outs. Um, but, you know, all in all, it's like they're not actual Instagram influencers, right? They don't actually have a real presence. Their accounts are just flooded with bots, flooded with fake engagement, and then um, inflated essentially to make it look appealing to you um, to want to, you know, post your product on their, on their feed or on their story to try and, you know, get traffic to your store. But then ultimately you don't really get much traffic, okay? There's a few ways to go about that. One, I started working with pages that were either really, really small in size or very, very big in size that they've just been around for forever. Like World Star, for example, okay? They're huge. Now, if you look on the smaller side of things, guys, typically smaller accounts, they're actually growing them, right? These guys that are trying to take your money, they'll just buy a bunch of followers right off the bat and then start trying to like, you know, they'll DM you, they'll DM other, you know, stores to try and get your attention to get you shout outs because it looks like a really big page. They offer, you know, uh, reasonable rates, right? And then you kind of go for them and you're just like, okay, well, uh, that's that's something to be wary of, okay? Now, why I go with smaller influencers is because most of the time, if, if they're still kind of small and growing, they're actually trying to grow organically, okay? And that, that's really key is because, and like a page with, you know, 80,000 followers, that's all legitimate is much better than a page with 500,000 followers where you know the influencers probably bought a majority of them, okay? And a majority of the engagement as well, okay? So that's something to keep in mind because oftentimes too, these smaller pages charge a lot less, okay? I myself have spent, you know, $10 on a shout out with a 300, 400, 500 dollar return depending on my products and like the tiering and just, I mean, obviously there's a lot of stuff that goes into that and the conversion of that, but the fact is you can get shout outs really, really cheap and have a really good conversion rate on them because you're working with smaller accounts, okay? So that's just something to note, guys, like kind of like my perspective on, you know, kind of being in this industry for so long is that, especially around social media and like the funnel that I preach, right? Is like we start with Instagram influencers and because of that, you kind of have to like look at what's changed, what's what's going on. And me personally, it's like, okay, I used to go for these big, big pages, you know, 40K to 1 million. Now I have to take a step back Realize that it's kind of like flooded. There, there, there still are good pages. Don't get me wrong, but it's flooded with people that you know, in, like, like inflate that, right? So now it's like, okay, I'm not gonna look at this chunk. I'm gonna go for like the the pullers, right? So I'm gonna go for the really, really big pages over here, 
or they're really, really small pages over here, okay? Small pages are organic, um, they're cheaper. The big pages, like, they've just been around forever and they have a huge presence. They're usually not um, inflated or faked or anything like that, okay? So that's, that's kind of one thing that I've noticed about dropshipping. In 2018, guys, going into that, it's like, hey, maybe you, like try and test out smaller influencers or really, really big influencers depending on your budget, okay? Number two, guys, dropshipping, there's a lot of people trying to go into it. There's a lot of people trying to do it. Now, what does that mean? Essentially, what it means for you, it, it, it's a good thing to keep an eye on this, right? Is people will flock to a certain niche or industry that they see, you know, uh, relatively more people having success in, right? So if they see, you know, five guys uh, making a lot of money in you know some sort of industry, you'll see a, like a majority of people kind of like flock over there, right? And for you, for even if you're new, experienced, it doesn't itch on my back. Uh, for you, basically, you can look at this, right? Because people will flock to you know an industry with money. And again, guys, what I tell you is look for competitors, look for competition. It means there's a lot of money in this space that you can grab if you can market your product better, position your brand better, stuff like that. Okay, so when you're actually trying to you know, decide, hey, what do I want to sell? What do I want to, you know, what niche do I want to jump into? What, you know, how do I want to like position my brand, luxury, affordable, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of things that go into play. It's like, hey, well, look to where everyone's going and see if you can do something similar um, in a similar industry, in a slightly different niche, like something like that. But just seeing that, hey, everyone's flocking this way, you can kind of like look that way and then capitalize on it, okay? Like, just market better than most people. Most people suck at marketing, guys. Like, anyone can make a site, anyone can say they're a dropshipper or an entrepreneur if they make a website and, and you know, have the apps installed and then have a few products thrown on their site, right? But most people can't get the marketing side of things down. And, it, I mean, that it's hard, it, it, it's complex at times. Once you understand it, it's, it's a fairly simple process to rinse and repeat and replicate for a bunch of different